My name is Matthew Matt Naughton. I'm the executive director of the Slash Roots Foundation, which itself is a civic tech organization based in Jamaica that works with government and civil society and the broader tech community to solve the development problems that really exist in the region. And what I wanted to talk to you all today a little bit about is, is, is that, that ecosystem and to learn a bit about what work that's been going on there. Slash Roots itself has its origins in a community of developers and designers and entrepreneurs across the region, and is one of the founding members of the Caribbean Open Institute, which is itself a coalition of partners across the region that are using open development approaches to solving problems. And through that, actually, launch our, organize a regional conference called Developing the Caribbean as an Open Data um, and Conference and Code Sprint that happens simultaneously across multiple islands in the region. And most recently, launched our own fellowship program, Call for the Caribbean, as Catherine said, um, in, part, in collaboration with the IDRC, the Mono School of Business, um, and look for work on issues in the region. But I want to talk a bit about where I come from a little bit before we kind of go back into that. And the reality is that when most people think of the Caribbean, this is what they think of. Nice beaches, reggae music, you know, Carnival, soca, all of that sort of stuff. And for the most part, that is what the Caribbean is. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, at the same time, the region is also a place that the, the countries are struggling to restructure their economies, like many cities and countries across the world. And after decades of underproductivity, low growth, and high unemployment, it's really in a defining moment at the, at the, at currently. And where I'm from in Jamaica, this is what our 2012 to 2013 budget looked like. And that large red box there is debt servicing, and which is about half of what the government's annual budget is. And in fact, we spend almost twice as much on education, I mean on debt servicing as we do as health and education. And so when we think about this idea of the interaction between government and citizenry, it's not just, it's, it's, it's about how do we solve these problems that are endemic to the region. Because no country, no government, no administration, public organization, civil society can solve these problems that exist in isolation. And so the work is about how do we create the space for all, more people to participate in solving that problem. And we started that process through, through, our, through, our, through our own fellowship program. Um, and we're about halfway through a pilot in which we have, um, uh, with, we're working with the Ministry of Agriculture and specifically the Rural Area Development Authority, which is an agency within that, to focus on this problem. And we're not, the interface, because of the size and structure of government, doesn't just lie in our cities, it lies in the agencies and the ministries like education and health um, as well. And so in this case, we're work, not working with that city, but working with this, this agency. And specifically focused on the specific problem of predial larceny which is the theft of agriculture, produce, and, and livestock, itself being a 50, robbing the industry of 50 million US dollars per year. Um, so it's a very huge problem. Um, and then when, and so the fellows have been working with this team, and by working with these and focusing on this very important core problem that is a priority not just for the government, but for the citizens, for various members kind of throughout the, the public, CSOs, community, rural area organizations, we started to create a space for a discourse around solving that problem that really didn't exist before. And so I think kind of a, a reoccurring meme that we've been he hearing over the last couple of days is that civic tech isn't just about the widgets and the pothole mapping and all these things. It's about how are we working together to create a space that more people can participate and solve problems that really get to the things that are important to the citizens and to the people that work in that place. And how do you, how do you, what is the technology that leverages and allows you to create that engagement that wasn't possible before? And through this process and kind of what the fellows have been learning, I mean, like most development challenges, we've learned that it's very complex. There, you know, we've been on, we've unearthed the implications around legislature, policy. There are obviously issues around kind of like the technology and just interface in terms of what farmers and extension officers work together. And all of those things are about, all of those things have been a part of how we've been thinking about the problem space in a way that hasn't traditionally been the approach that um, we've been, the government has been working with. And so, 
Moving forward is kind of a very interest where we're in quite a very interesting place. And I don't think anybody in our organization um, or even in the government partner, I mean, Pretty Larson is an issue that has been a challenge for multiple administrations. We don't think we're going to solve the problem in six months. Um, but I think what has been quite optimistic is working with a very forward-thinking government agency in Rado and also a number of stakeholders across the space to create a dialogue that didn't ex exist before, in some places accelerating some discussions and the development of some discussions that were stuck. And I think we're all quite excited um, by where we are. <laughs>